Hi guys, it's MaggieBot here to do another video review. Today's game is Crossmaster Arena. This is a two to four player arena tactics game from Japan Me Games. That's a huge departure from my normal obsessions. This one involves all these little cutesy figures and running around and rolling dice and collecting stuff. Uh, there are zero wooden cubes in this game and yet I'm still giving it a positive review. So in the video I'd like to take you through some of the setup, the gameplay, and what I thought was really well done and somewhat lacking in the rulebook. Overall I would say if you see it, buy it, and expect to buy a lot of expansions. I haven't purchased all of them yet. Uh, the biggest coup I had was going to PAX, meeting the guys that produce the game, and they're going to be sending me metal bits to replace some of the bits that come with the regular game. So, any time now from Arizona or whatever. Uh, let's just take a look at the game and you can decide what you think after I'm done. Thanks. Alright. Welcome to the arena. So, as you can see, the arena map has lots of little bits all over it. it includes these cool stand-up trees, um, little bushes to get in your way so you can't move through them. Uh, I super glued my crates together because then your characters can actually stand on them without falling over. Uh, you see some coins here you pick up during the game. And then there are a bunch of these battle dice, extra coins. These are kind of like your victory points. These are your glory gallons of them. So as you go through and kill characters you actually take these from your opponents. Um, damage and action point counters and the marketplace comes with lots of equipment, potions, and all kinds of big buffs you can buy. But as you can see here I purchased the base set plus five expansions so far. Plus there was a promo when you first bought your box set you could get named Amalia. Um, you see there's different archetypes in here. This is Srammy and he sort of looks like Oscar Cass. Um, you definitely see this kind of look here. These are two different characters but they have kind of the same model. And then there are these. These girls literally like identical but they have very different abilities. So, their abilities are all written out in their cards. Let's go through anatomy of a card, shall we? On the top, you'll see three different stats. So, you see the green diamond here is your movement points, your heart is your health, and your star is your action points. You'll see some abilities. So, Amalia has defensive brambles and an attachment ability. They have some damage counters if they do damage, and the number of attack action points that they take to perform. So each character has a different level, and they also come with two, another stat, which is how much glory they're worth. This is how much glory little Healy is worth. She's worth three, and that also helps you build your list at the beginning of the game. Generally speaking, you get 12 points to build a list. Uh, my partner and I have been trying to find a real good way if we only won own one version of the game how to best keep everything nice and fair but we still haven't found it yet because like this healer is you know, levels above this one and it, it's hard to know what's going to what's going to even it out whereas these kind of base characters that summon mobs aren't quite as good as the others so we probably won't see too much base we won't see much play after that but these are the ones I've purchased so far and Bill has taken a nap. So, before you start, characters will all start, if you can see here, on their side of the board, anywhere where there's these little chicken feet. Um, so, I've kind of placed everything at random right now because I'm not playing a real strategic game. I just want you guys to get a good sense. Um, I populate all the spaces on the board that have coins with comma coins. Um, including the little demon gates, little guys with eyes, you also get a coin. Uh, anywhere that has tree stump gets a foldy tree. And anywhere that has this little bush icon gets a bush token. 
Um, as you can see, one side of the board is kind of, as somebody said to me the other day, like a cornucopia in the middle, like Hunger Games. So you're trying to draw people in and give them all this neat gold and things, and there's demons ever, demon gates everywhere. Oh, and the, the, the crates too, so I don't put the, forget to put the crates up. Um, and then you've got your guys, they all start out, and each player starts with seven gallons of glory. You, the first round would generally see most teams moving up toward the other team and picking up all these little comma coins. So a character can move up to their movement points and use up to their action points. They don't have to do them in any, they don't have to make all their movement at one time. They can move and then take an action, move and take an action. Um, picking up comma coins off the board will each take one action point and shopping at the little, the demon eye, demon gate things, those also cost an action point. Buying things at the demon gate, you can buy one of three different things. You can buy pieces of equipment. Equipment has this kind of squiggly background. This one is a hammer. And it gives you an extra kind of attack. It costs six attack or six action points, but it does three damage to anyone in a hammer area. So there's different AOE effects that will affect different por portions of the board near your character. Um, the next one you have, these are like potion buffs. Um, you pop these once and they just give you a one-time benefit. This one, this one gives you an extra gallon of glory and minus two coins. And finally, you have an effect that lasts an entire turn. So the pyro buff, you'll pop, oh, you'll pop this, and a character will do one extra yellow kind of damage and have one resistance to yellow for the rest of their turn. Let's go over the anatomy of a die. So, Crossmaster Arena has these. Crossmaster Arena uses proprietary dice. These are used in attacking, in defending, in trying to lock people into melee combat, and in trying to get away from others. So, there are six different sides. First off, we have a shield. So when someone rolls damage against you, your defending player has the opportunity to roll to try and deflect some of that damage. Shields deflect one damage each. Ooh. And then you have your critical. So most abilities have some sort of damage that they deal, like this deals one purple type damage. For every crit that you roll when you're attacking, that adds one extra damage to that attack. The boot, so characters, when they are next to each other. Now, if this knight tries to walk away without fighting, then this character has the ability to try and lock them down. So a lock will keep them from moving and will actually drain the rest of their action and movement points for the rest of the turn. So this character would roll, try and eat a lock, and if this character rolls a boot, they move away anyway. It's dodging. Um, you have a wild here. Once you choose, once you roll this face, you'll actually choose which face you want to put up. And you also have a crit dodge side, so you can choose which side that is. Now, the reason this is important, and the reason you have to change the facing of the die, is at the beginning of every turn. Each player will roll the dice and determine whether they want to buff up their characters for a round or turn these in for money. So in this case, I could turn it into a crit and add an extra die every time I'm trying to damage or heal. I can also apply a shield and try and roll an extra die every time I defend, try and get rid of less damage. Now. If an event happens where I roll doubles, now this is called tension. And then both sides of the game lose one of their gallons of glory permanently. This makes the game somewhat shorter, keeps it down to a nice 45 minute or so time limit. We, on this side, will start with the Cloud Knight. Now he has 
four movement and six action points. He also has a ranged ability that says from one to five spaces away he can deal one damage and it costs him three action points. When you count spaces in the game, I'll show you, you're going to count orthogonally. So there is a grid here and if our knight is here then you count orthogonally to get where you're going. So this is one, two, three, four, five spaces away. Diagonals do not count. There are a few things in the game that block line of sight, mostly the trees, and when other characters get in the way, you can't see through to hit an enemy. Huh? You can't see through to hit an enemy if an allied player is in the way. So without that in the way, he can fire up to five spaces away, three, four, five. So he's going to target Gems Blonde here. The Cloud Knight has one damage and does not have the critical hit power. Critical hit power adds one extra die when rolling for damage. So the Cloud Knight here would take a die, roll it, and determine that he got a crit or a dodge. So he's going to change that to a crit and deal her two damage. Now she has a chance of rolling for defense. She did not get it. She would have to roll a wild or a shield in order to deflect some of the damage. Damage counters get permanently attached to the character and they do not wear off at the end of the turn. It's because some characters in this game can heal, can heal themselves or heal others. There are heal spells in pink. I can't find one for you. It kind of looks like a heart. The character reaches their threshold of health, so if he got up to 9 damage, he will die. The opposing team would take the 3 gallons of glory from him, and he would basically just kind of flip him over, and he's done for the turn, or for, for, the, for the game. So that's basically it. So each turn, you roll your dice for inspiration. If you have matches, you lose a gallon of glory. You move around the board, take actions, either firing at opponents, picking up coins for one action point, taking something from the market for one action point at a demon gate, so you have to be present there. And that's pretty much all it is. If you're standing on top of a crate, you can add plus one to all ranged attacks or heals you have. And if you are behind a bush, you can't move through it, but you can certainly see over it. Now that we've seen the game, the setup, and the basic gameplay, let's talk a little bit about why in the world I like this game. So, it is very beautiful. It's A lot of care has been taken to make sure that it looks and feels like a 3D arena experience that could have been a video game, but it's kind of fun that it isn't. It's nice to play something where you really are trying to kill the other person, but there's a lot of customization in the teams, there's a lot of silly gameplay, there are big threats to put on the board, little threats that are more powerful than you think, and the dice rolling, yes, it's very present, but I do feel that it's a little mitigated. There are some equipment, there are things you can do so you're not just going to win or lose by dice. Um, I frequently lose by just not playing as well as the other player. So a few things that I feel could be improved upon and probably will be if this game gets accepted into the gaming community at large. Uh, the first and foremost, the rule book left a lot to be desired. It does a very good job of explaining the gameplay. It does it so well, in fact, that half of it the whole game is a tutorial to learn how to play, and you actually put your pieces on these boards in the book. So if you're like me and you didn't really want to do any of that and you wanted to jump right in, you start about midway through the book on your basic setup. And after that, it has a kind of mishmash way of teaching you. It's assuming you've read the tutorial. So that's fine and dandy. 
The one thing it was very much missing for me was a, a glossary of all mechanics available on figures. Most things included in the base set are inside the book. Though, assuming that people are only going to play the base set seems like folly to me, and trying to have people go through the additional maps that come every time you buy an expansion, as you can see here, I have quite a few. Uh, that seems like folly. I'm just going to play the regular game with my new fancy characters and hope that I can figure it out. Things like heads or tails seems kind of obvious, but steals health, I googled just to make sure that I was playing it correctly. The rules regarding mobs, bombs, other things you can summon with characters were a little messy in my opinion. But we figured it out, and that was fine. The game really feels like a two-player. I have played now the four-player a couple of times, and the only way to play it is two versus two. The free-for-all is so messy, and there's player elimination, and it's just kind of boring compared to the real experience. So play on a team. You play with the person kitty-corner from where you are, so each team takes half a turn at a time as you go around the table. Each player controls two characters that equal six initiative and it feels like a real effort to you start on opposite sides of the board so you have to come together and make a plan and single out other things so it, it very much feels like they, they built it for a two-player experience. At two players you have all four of your own characters you can choose what ideas are going to be in your head and you don't have to vocalize them at the table so your opponents don't really know what you're trying to do. I love, love, love this game. I can't say it enough. If anywhere in the internet world people have a line on how I can get my paws on some promo dice, the Kickstarter promo dice would be fabulous. Uh, the copy we have at work of this, the facings of all the dice are wearing out. We've shown the game so much that hands and oils have actually rubbed the facings off. So I plan to fix the, that with a little bit of paint, but because they're not engraved, it means the dice have a lifespan. Um, otherwise, let's say for components, I'd give this a 9 out of 9. These little crates, I super glued mine together, but they're just friggin' adorable. For gameplay as it stands, I'd probably say 7 out of 10. 7 out of 10, so much fun leaves a little to be desired so many dice but there are definitely better characters than wor and worse characters so that is what it is I wouldn't miss it if you see it in store grab it there's no reason not to I know it's expensive I think I got my copy I 75 maybe a little less but if you can find it anywhere near retail just do it you'd be doing yourself a favor uh, so that is, that's just about it. If you have any questions, comments, please leave them below. Post them to my blog. Ping me on Facebook. Whatever you want to do, I'll get back to you and we'll have a nice discussion. Thanks, guys. Bye.